Hi guys, Postman's Bin. Some people ask why I blank out my address. Well, quite simple. I don't want all sorts of spam junk being sent to me. The other thing I do is I scan these things, the QR code and that, just to check that those don't actually give my address away as well. Because Royal Mail ones actually give you the full address there. But these don't. That one says what it says there, and that one says what it says there. So I've checked them already. Anyway, the guy was a bit worried. He knocked on the door, wanted me to check, because the box was broken. That bit was missing. I ripped it open to check that everything was still in there. Well, there we go. I've got a couple more LiPo batteries. I was watching one of my old videos, very old videos, where I was saying I didn't want to get involved in LiPo batteries because of the potential problems with them. Catching fire and storage and having to buy chargers for them and all that sort of thing. And somehow or other over the years I seem to have drifted into it. So that's a couple of 3S Florion 2200 milliamp hour batteries. I suppose we better check they're actually inside. Can't even get the box open. Okay, so that looks like a battery. Comes with a little strap as well, that's nice. And the right connector for what I want. once over. They look okay at the moment. That's for little projects like that one. I've got a 3S LiPo on there. Right, and then the other thing is another dash camera for the car. Oh, it's been damaged as well. Because the one that I've got doesn't charge the battery very well. It does sometimes. If you tap it a bit, gently, then the battery does start charging. So there's obviously something a bit loose inside. I have taken it apart before and adjusted things. But it's not a very high quality one. You really can't read number plates on it, that sort of thing. So I was looking for another relatively cheap one. I think this was about 30 quid, thereabouts, a bit more, but not much more, so it's still a relatively cheap one. That's not a very robust looking connector. Oh well, we'll find out when we stick it in the car. USB, HDMI. Charger. Hopefully I can use the one that I've already got in the car. That's all nicely behind the bodywork out the way. I wonder if it's got any power in it at the moment. 
that looks like on off. Yeah, blue light's coming on. Uh, well, it did come on. Battery low. Okay, well, I'll stick that on charge and then I'll put it in the car. And we might have a video later on, see what sort of picture we get out of it. Still, that's today's post bag. I'm just stepping through the menu functions here while we're charging it up. Push in the middle button there brings up the menu. If I push it a second time it steps over to the settings menu. Third time back to the screen. So let's step down is up and down. Resolution. Oh, press the wrong button. <laughs> OK buttons are the top one. We'll do that again. Right. Step down, resolution, OK. 1080 FHD, 1920 by 1080. We'll leave it at that. OK. Loop recording. Three minutes. Yeah, that's OK. Exposure value. Leave that as it is, zero. Motion detection. We'll leave that off. Record audio. I usually have that turned off so you don't hear a swearing in the car. But I'll leave it on for now. Date stamp. We'll leave that on. I haven't set the date yet. G sensor. That's when it detects whether you've had an accident or not and locks the files so they can't be overwritten. Leave that off for now. HDR. HDR. I can't remember what HDR was. Reading the instructions. Let's have a look. Oh, high, dyna high dynamic range, isn't it, I think? Which is supposed to give you better quality pictures. <laughs> HDR, present a crisp and clear picture quality with harmonious contrast in a high contrast, high discrepancy environment. We'll leave it off for now, but then I'll try it on at a later date. Okay, is that our license plate? That's where we can input the license plate, I think, so it displays on the screen for this car. Leave that off for now. Press that middle button again. Comes across to this one. Park mode. I think that switches it on if somebody bumps your car while it's parked. Date and time. Right, we want to do that. 2018. Okay. Uh, 12 we want. Fourth time eleven. OK, 
Okay. Year, month, day. Yeah, we'll leave it like that for now. Okay, how do we get out of that? Press that again. Yeah, turn that. Auto power off. Leave it off. Screen saver. Leave that off for now. Beep sound. On. Language. English, yes. Frequency. We're in the UK, 50 hertz. Flash off, yeah. Format. Oh, yes, we ought to do that. Okay, that appears to have done it. We've just put the settings in so we don't want to go back to default. And that's the version number. Right. So that's gone through the settings. And then that one turns the speaker, uh, not speaker, microphone on and off. Oops, wrong button. Yeah, don't know if you can just see up there, the little icon comes up to indicate the microphone switched on and off. Uh, I think that's about it. Mode. Well, that's camera mode. Playback. And record mode. Bottom one's on off. Yep. Oh, that button is the lock button. That'll stop you overwriting or erasing anything. So in the event of an accident, you're supposed to remember to press that, if it hasn't done it automatically. And then the top button, I would think, which is the OK button, will also start recording. Let's press it and find out. Please insert C6 and above card. Oh, so the memory card I put in there wasn't good enough. Ah, oh, that's good. Well, we'll have to have a look. <laughs> so I've gone through all that and I need to change the memory card. I've got both dash cams together, not in perfect positions, but we should be able to test or see uh, what the difference is in the screens. I think we can see straight away that one's giving us a nice wide angle and that one apart from being washed out, is quite narrow. So, we'll have a drive anyway. Obviously this is the new one, and that's the old one that I'm replacing.
guys, we've given the new camera a run in the car, compared it to the old one, and it comes out favourably. The Orski Driving Recorder S680. The main benefit is it's got a wider field of view than my previous camera, so that's got to be a benefit. You get a bit more information about what's coming round either side of you that my old camera missed. Uh, new camera's brighter colours. Um, I haven't tried it on the HDR setting, the high dynamic range, but it seemed to do all right in the dark and in the rain. So, well, I've had it for about six hours now, and yeah, I'm happy with it so far. I may do another review in a few months' time or something like that, but at the moment, for the price I paid for it, it seems to be fine. Hey, thanks for watching. There's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily, so don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases. You can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar on Patreon to buy me coffee. You can always find more information in the video description. Thanks again for watching.